good stuff. Let's talk about light work, man. Man, new album. Yes, new indeed. EP. Yes, indeed. What's the overarching theme? You know, the songs touch different places, but if you had to say this is what this season represents or this project, what's what do you think the world needs that's in this project right now? Whatever from everything that's going on to families to culture or whatever. Um, I think I think there's a lot of balance there. There's balance in the sound. I think this this project is different from anything I've ever put out. Mm. Um, the the sound is is different, but and it's some feel good stuff on there. Like a lot of my stuff be all super deep. One of the reasons I called it light work is because I wanted some of the records on there to not be so heavy, mm. right? Like. For the for the new believer, like listen listen to what Cats is listening to now, especially the youth. You know what I'm saying? You got the the, the little pumps, the Twenty One Savages, the you know what I'm saying? All of these cat like, and then I want to come with this old super deep. Like, <laughs> I need to I need to be able to become the Gentile to the Gentile, the Jew to the Jew, and all that. Which you know that we can get on a whole another right. topic about what people call you when you try to put that into action and what right. that looks like. Right. But um, this really, man, I want it to be something that the believer, right? Because y'all got now, we're giving y'all the project, y'all got work to do too. Mm -hmm. Y'all part of this light work because there's that person that you arguing about what's real hip hop and you trying to force it and you, okay, give them this now. We got something that can be a, a middle ground for right. y'all because I, I I incorporated the new swag also with the lyricism, also right. with the message, with the melodies and all that stuff, man. So um, I'm really trying to make it a little easier to digest, but at the same time, I got to be me. So, you know, you know, <laughs> right. I, I'm going to hit them over the head with something. But, right. uh, we'll see. We'll see how they take to it, man. So on OK Fine, right? Dope song. You talked about insincerity among believers and you talked about how almost like your trust was broken. You had an expectation that this is church. Hey, I'm not perfect, but once people see that I really love God, I'll be straight in this community of faith. But it seems like when I'm listening to the record that you're encountering a lot of false motives and insincerity from believers in what you do. What's that been like? What have you experienced and, and how do you handle it? Um, it's kind of hard because I've had, I had trust issues before I came in, you know what I'm saying? That's why people see me with the same people. They see my circle so small and some of those things kind of lend to that as well. Like you have a lot of ingenuine, uh, conversation and dialogue to where, for me, what's becoming hard is not to treat everybody the same and not to have this wall up for everybody because you're going to keep the bad out and some of the good. There's people that God's going to send your way that you're going to put up that wall. You know what I'm saying? So trying to stay open to whoever God might send my way, but to, like, it's hard. Like you start, there's a certain way you become trained to see certain things. So when people hit me up, right? I had I had somebody text me yesterday and this morning and it's like, OK, OK, I know that there's a part that you're trying to get to, but you don't want to come at me after not hitting me in a long time <laughs> and ask straight for it. Right. So we're going to go back and forth a couple messages, a couple messages. Then you're going to hit me with what you really hit me for to begin with. And that's exactly what happened. Right. You know what I'm saying? And it's that kind of thing where it's like. I'm not into having to figure people out. Right. That's not like, that's why I keep my, my people around me. I, don't, I ain't got to figure you out or right. nothing. And it makes it more peaceful for me. Mm. Um, and that's one of the hard things. The things that, that provide more peace for me, the public don't always like. Like mm. even the comments are not responding to people all the time. And you got cats who might be like, yo, you know, you used to respond or you don't respond. You not real and all that. And it's like, bro, if you knew the stress, the, the, the stuff that I've gone through behind closed doors because of dealing and being so interpersonal with thousands of people and thousands of opinion about me, you know what I'm saying? Thousands of opinions about myself. It's like sometimes I got to block that out and you block out 
sometimes you block out the love with the hate. And you know, sometimes for your for the sake of your peace, because I gotta be th I gotta be this man when I'm home with my family. I can't be biz locked in the you know what I'm saying like bro, real talk. I don't even know if this is you know got anything to do with the question. Like last week, bro, I found myself sitting in, in my in my closet in the dark, crying out to God, bro. I just had so much pressure, and. It just all broke me down. I'm sitting in the dark, bro, just crying. And Shavana comes in and sits down with me. And, you know, we start praying together. And we just both sitting there pitch black. And, like, people don't see that part of this, carrying this mantle and trying your best to do everything you do for God, to glorify God and then see people call you a devil, call you Satanist, call you this and 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 then you try to you know ex explain yourself hoping maybe they'll get it maybe they'll understand and then they go further to drag you through the mud and call you the worst thing you can ever call someone who loves jesus christ you know what i'm saying to have that happen over and over again to to have emails coming through your notifications like yo you fake this you devil bro like it's hard so when i shell up it might make me look a certain way to the outside, but I'm trying to protect my sanity and my peace. Have you ever been approached that way in person? <sighs> never, 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 not one time. And and that's what I'm trying to, but that's why I got to try to pull away from social media too, right. because social, social media creates the illusion that this is the reality. Like, and you know, it's real people, but it's people not being real. You right, know what I'm exactly. saying? Um, and I do have to remind myself of that, like nobody's even remotely approached me with that energy ever. And I've been doing this for a minute on, on the joint you got with Joey Vontas it's called down. Uh, you talked about unexpected struggles and pressures and people think it's sweet and you kind of just explain some of that, but what's that like? Like, because you're, a, you're a top Christian rapper in your field, bro. And people we shouldn't covet or envy, but you sit in a spot that a lot of people think they want. To someone who wants to, and they might feel like they're pure in their own mind, they want to ascend to a higher level, they want their ministry or their career to go higher, what are some of the things that they should count the cost about? What are some unexpected things, and some of them you named, but what would you say to a young artist who wants to elevate and progress, but there are some things he might not be able to take into account because he hasn't sit, sat where you sit? Um, yo, it, it's really, it consumes your whole entire being, right? And I'm, and I'm speaking for myself. You know, there's like, there's no difference between Bizzle and Mark Felder. They're the same person. So whatever you say about Bizzle goes for Mark Felder, the father. But it, it, it's all together. It's not like I'm putting up an act and saying, you guys can hate that the actor, the role, and I don't take it personal, mm -hmm. right? Um, so you have to be ready ready to have your, your character assassinated over and over again and have the, the purest motives and have it not be seen and try to explain and have it not be understood. Um, and over time, bro, it becomes stressful. It becomes, especially like when these people wear the name of Christ. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like you expect certain things from the world, your your bars lower, but I'm starting to see that yo, everybody and we know that everybody that, that wears and throws the name of Christ around is not your brother in Christ, is not your sister in Christ. Mm -hmm. Um just cause they say so. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. Um so dealing with that is uh is very hard. You also have to with I'm, I'm trying to learn how to separate, separate this thing now, right. right? Because there is no separation and I need to be able to give my family all of me when it's time to give them all of me, right. you know what I'm saying? And especially most Christian rappers starting, you're doing it yourself. So you're your own CEO and CEOs don't have closing hours. You know what I'm saying? Like when I were, when I was working a nine to five, I used to always wonder why these people do the, the easiest work, right? The managers and supervisors, why they do the easiest work and get paid the most. 
And it's like, okay, when I get out of, when I clock out of Walmart, I don't care what happens at Walmart. They got to still take this work home at night and, and all of that. And that's what it is. So now I'm working on trying to shut it down mentally, mm-hmm. not be in my bed at 11, 12, 1 o'clock with a laptop trying to come up with marketing strategies and, and put these things together. You know what I'm saying? Right. Not not saying, hold on, son, hold on, son, and, and then not playing with them and then saying, my bad, I got you next time. You know what I'm saying? Like, right. um. You definitely, you definitely want to make sure it's the, it's a route that God has called you to go go. You know what I'm saying? Because I believe that just like Israel, every, every time He sent them, He covered them. You know what I'm saying? It was times they went to war on their own, they got smashed on. That wasn't His call. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, man, make sure you make sure you you ready for <laughs> for what it entails because it's not that easy. It's not. And hold on, and I, and I'm gonna add this. Um, um, so one of the hardest things is, like, I I make music from a standpoint where I care about the people I'm making the music for. Right. Like, I really love the people I'm making the music for, and my heart is in it. So when you do that, it makes it harder to have people turn on you. And have people flush you that like, bro. Like if people knew the opportunities that that I passed on because I've thought about the people. You know what I'm saying? Well, artists I may not have worked with because I thought about the people and trying to protect them from certain content and decisions that before I make the decision, I consider my fans, my people. Like yo, I really care about them and 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 try to. And to have people flush you down the drain like so easily, bro, it hurts. And it's almost like the 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 answer for that is to stop caring. Hmm. But if I stop caring, my music changes. Wow. Because I'm no longer, you know what I'm saying? Right. So it's like wow. I can't put up the I don't care anymore. That way it doesn't affect me. So I have to keep myself in a vulnerable space so that I can still make music and serve people and just take the stones. Wow. And that hurts. You know what I'm saying? It's hard to do. But even as I explain it now, like it sounds the most like what Jesus did. You know what I'm saying? So um, praise God. You know what I'm saying? Amen. Amen.